offer. Were you here earlier on when we got you a free glass of wine at Down Under? If you present yourself there and say you're connected to Expats Portugal, you'll get a glass of wine to go with your meal there. Um, and T-Duck says, yeah, any any lunch in Portugal is a happy meal. And uh, that got Victoria's attention. Wait, what? Free wine? Excellent stuff. OK, this um, this uh, uh, news item about um, the Pope coming to, I think it's a, it, it does revolve around uh, the, the, the great big youth festival that's happening, the Pope's visit and a strangely shaped stone or sculpture um, that, uh, that I don't think they want the Pope or others to see. So I'm very going to quickly going to touch on this, so to speak. Um, it is the Willy story in the Portugal resident at the moment. And if you know, if you wonder why um, or are disappointed that I never talk, do the swearing or the rude words in Portuguese, here's one for you. It's a pirilhão, which means willy uh, in Portuguese. Um, so it should have given a warning, shouldn't I? I should have done a PG warning uh, on the show this morning. Um, but uh, this will bring us back to standing stones, cromlex and meniers. Um, I think. Uh, let's have a quick look then at this. I'll bring it onto the screen for you so you can see it as well. Not in any great detail, uh, just in case you are squeamish, I have to add. Um, but that's the um, that's the obelisk in question. It's all about the standing stones this morning, isn't it? The Pirilhão will be back in renewed glory. I think Natasha's had some fun writing this, right? After the celebrations of the Catholic Church have left the capital. Because as we know, Catholics don't have willies. They don't want to be offended by this stuff, do they? A council keen to... I'm joking. A council keen to ensure the 90-ton obelisk... Who doesn't like a 90-ton obelisk first thing in the morning isn't in evidence during World Youth Day. Now, in a country where you see phallus-shaped confectionery and ceramics just about every turn, certainly if you go to Caldas de Reña, this is a somewhat uh, uh, prim and proper Portuguese angle here, isn't it? Officially christened the Cravo e Colunas, the carnation and columns, the phallic element of this work is meant to symbolize the virile force and vigor of the revolution. Oh, don't all obelisks do that? Countdown has begun then on the temporary masking of the willy. <laughs> uh, the, or the Opirilhar sculpture by João uh, Coutilheiro, which has stood proudly. She, Natasha has enjoyed writing this. It stood proudly in Lisbon's Parque Eduardo the 7th, uh, commemorating the April 25th uh, um, Carnation Revolution moment since 1997. Uh, but it could be all too much for the Pope when he visits. Yes, he doesn't look like to look down on the unemployed. Uh, yes, it, it, but it could, or look up to the unemployed in this sense, uh, it, but it could all be too much for the Pope when he visits the park as parts of the events scheduled for World, World Youth Day. And you can begin to understand why they're a little bit um, awkward about this and that'll be the first week of August and that's a controversy of its own which you'll also find out about uh, on the Portugal News and the Portugal Resident um, which, which is um, they are expecting uh, well they, they think it's going to be what is this yeah latest news to the right of the screen their countdown to World Youth Day harried by warnings of potential catastrophe with about six weeks to go it could it be too much for the Pope when he visits the park as part of the event scheduled for World Youth Day. He does not want to see a 90-ton willy. Uh, in the first week of August is when he's coming, which is why the decision has been made to restore the massive sculpture, ensuring that it will be temporarily masked at a total cost of €121,000, uh, to add there in small change, including Eva, I hasten to add. Didn't talk about Eva, did we, uh, with Raquel next time. According to Correo de Mania Saturday uh, edition, the Correo Indiscreto, the entire sculpture is being dismantled and removed to be returned to its place after the celebrations of the Catholic Church have ended. This was the original idea of the council, as Publico explained earlier this year, but the council then opted for the cheaper option of restoring the monument, which has suffered a number of fissures over the years. Oh, yes, don't they all? Uh, and keeping it under wraps for the entirety of World Youth Day. I'm sure if we speak to uh, Dr. Michael of uh, Serenity, he can help you with any fissures in your obelisk. Uh, World Youth Day is costing Lisbon Council, the government, and the Portuguese Catholic Church combined a small fortune. Last estimates uh, were in the region of 160 million. So this is just small change in the scheme of this uh, World Youth Day event. 160 million euros, over one and a half million visitors are expected during the event. But they won't be seeing the willy, which will be shrouded in the distance, only for probably some youth to say, hey, isn't that a big willy over there being shrouded? You know what teenagers are like. 
Uh, over one and a half million visitors are expected during the event, which runs from August the 1st to the 6th. And in spite of all preparatory efforts, authorities have warned that traffic and quite a bit else in the capital is likely to become a chaos in the days affected. So I guess the people who... Uh, this is the least of their worries, isn't it? The 90-ton woolly um, at the top of the Eduardo Park there. It does cast quite a dash, cut quite a dash on the skyline there. And now... You can you, this can never be removed from your from your consciousness and perception as you as you uh, ever visit that uh, hallowed ground there. Okay, um, good luck then, uh, everyone involved with uh, restoring the phallic sculpture. Let's return to other fallacies uh, right now and standing stones as we return to the question that we're asking over on Learn About Portugal on this solstice day, 21st of June, as some may be considering stripping off to mingle in the many years and contemplate their cromlechs. Where in Portugal will we find the highest concentration of prehistoric monuments in Europe, no less? Now, this is really divided. I mean, my earthquake question that we started out with this week, uh, most people, well, I think everyone got the right answer, but they didn't realise there was a little bit of a catch uh, and a trick question to that. Today, the, uh, the poll has a, a real spread was uh, well, where, where will you find the highest concentration of prehistoric monuments in Europe? Is it the Pernay de Gerdes National Park? Uh, is it the golf clubs of the Algarve? Is it Pingadolce's end of line selection section in the supermarket? Is it Evera Alentejo or is it the parliamentary assembly? Do pop over to learnaboutportugal.com and you can make your own guess, or maybe you know for sure. I'm going to show you a some more standing stones as captured by our very own Coach Turner. And uh, this is a bit of a clue for you. 